Peace the Lord, precious saints. Today, I would like to pray and also talk to you about the slumbering spirit. Now, it is important to understand that dozing away during a sermon or falling asleep is not something that has just happened yesterday, but it's something that has happened for many years. And even when we turn to the book of Acts chapter 20, we see that in verse 9, it said, Seated in the window was a young man named Ekatos, who was sitting and sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. And when he was sound asleep, he fell to the ground from the third story and was picked up dead. So, and we also see... Peter, James, and John, they dozed off in the garden of Gethsemane, where they were supposed to watch and pray. So this reminds us of how many times our dedicated people take the time to wake us up uh, at particular times to pray as it was with Jesus Christ. So what happens? Well, we can see that witchcraft is also used in covens where they have purposely targeted churches and Christians to have a slumbering spirit come into their services so that it would it would limit and hinder people from truly hearing the word of God. So we understand that not only is it witchcraft but also it is the devil's plan because he comes to what he comes to kill steal and destroy but ultimately he wants to take away us from being able to hear the word of god now romans 13 verse 11 and to 14 says and do this understanding the present time the hour has come for you to awake to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer than when we first believe the night is nearly over the day is almost here so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light let us behave decently as in the day etc etc so it's a calling us to arise and to waken then we also see in 1 thessalonians chapter 5 we see the word of god is saying here that we are also to be what we are to be awaken for those who sleep sleep at night and those who get drunk get drunk at night but since we belong to the day let us be in self-control so it's also talking about us to arise and to awaken out of our sleep Isaiah 52 verse 1 and 2 says awake awake clothe yourself in strength clothe yourself in your beautiful garments shake yourself from the dust rise up lose yourself from the chains around your neck hallelujah so here we want to talk about and pray specifically against this particular spirit of slumber that comes to what to to hinder and to stop us from coming into the freedom that Christ Jesus paid at the cross. Hallelujah. So a number of things that we can do to help people in church is our souls and spirits live in the body and thus is affected by the state of the body. So if the body is tired or weak, it takes a lot of effort and strong will to keep it awake, even in church. So if we walk more in the flesh than in the spirit of God, then it's obviously going to be a lot more difficult. So people can sleep in church if they are, what, not interested, are not participating in the events of the service. Participation includes shouting, hallelujah, clapping, responding to the preacher. People can sleep in church if the service is cold and boring. So some sermons are just long, boring speeches, all grammar, no life. The Bible says the word is letter, it brings death, but the word in spirit brings life. Hallelujah. And how blessed it is to receive a word in season. Now, sometimes sleeping in church is a device of the devil, as what we've mentioned, to keep people from getting what God has for them. And if one is not sensitive and alert in their spirit, 
they'd fall for it. People sleep in church sometimes because there is a demonic influence in the atmosphere making people sleep. Now, this is often an agenda, as we've mentioned, to witchcraft. Yes, witchcraft. And warlocks make it their aim to send a spirit of slumber to churches for the, for those that are weak spiritually to prevent them from hearing the word of God. Now, people sleep in church, especially when it's time for the sermons. The devil doesn't want us to listen and be obedient to the word of God. That is why he does everything to prevent us from listening. It's both a spiritual and physical thing, yes, but it is interesting that sleeping happens just when the sermon is about to begin or just when you start praying or just when you start reading the word of God. And if we are not strong enough, the devil will want Uh, to turn it into a full sleep in order for you not to succeed in praying in God. But any time you notice these signs and you and you still force yourself to pray, believe me, that prayer will surely be answered by God. Any time we call on God, the devil knows that we are about to impact some knowledge unto us or he tries to distract you from it. Not only in churches, but it also happens, what, in the classroom. Why? Because the devil knows that you're about to, uh, you're about to impact something great upon you. In order to make you fail, you will start dozing. You will even sleep off fully. Sleeping in church is also another way of demonic people operating inside the church. So agents in the church, in order to disturb people's prayers, I have seen many confess that they, uh, with their mouth in church, even speaking in tongues. Demons also speak in tongues inside the church. And if you are not wise, you will mistake it with the Holy Spirit. But it is not. It is not from God. So sleeping in church can be prevented. And it's time for all of us to make that personal decision for every believer that we should shake this off and we should press in deeper into prayer hallelujah so we're going to pray right now so father god in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we bind and break all spirits of rejection procrastination lack of consciousness laziness spirit of sleep and hopelessness breeds depression and depression robs you from your motivation now and send these spirits to the dry places go back to the pit of hell in the name of jesus christ father god we call upon right now lord in the name of jesus christ lord for every person to stand to the attention of our lord jesus right now and you will wake them up and you will call us out of darkness into light lord we pray today we call your spirit forward and say awaken us And come into the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command all demonic forces holding your spirit in darkness and pull you out of darkness into Lord's light and say you are the Lord's child and call on the presence of the Lord to touch you and wake you up and reconnect you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every destructive habit designed to waste our calling die in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we pray. As we invite you, Lord, to come upon our lives to have your way and destiny for us. Let the waters of life flow into every area that is for our spiritual life today. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, let your glory overshadow us and our testimonies today. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we declare today, Lord, that everything is shaken. Father God, in the name of Jesus we shut every demonic door that has been opened to hinder our prayer life. We bind the cares of this world and the pride of life. Leviathan is today has no place over our lives. Pride and deception are our enemies and not our friends. Lord, we break every dark covenant that has been set against the call of God upon our lives. Lord, we pray today that we are liberated from every unholy thing that would creep into the corridors of our spiritual life we renounce all soul ties that would distract our mind from prayer assignment 
Lord, we bind all financial, emotional, physical, associational and, and professional distractions against our private time with God and with our prayer assignment on the wall. Lord, we renounce any witchcraft or forms or manipulation that would infiltrate our spiritual life. The spirit of infirmity is bound. The spirit of slumber is bound. The spirit of slothfulness is bound. The spirit of hopelessness is bound. And greed and selfishness are bound forever off us today. Lord, we pray. We are quickened by the Spirit of the Most High God to fast, watch and pray, worship, study the Word and do warfare in the name of Jesus Christ. The spiritual discipline of the Lord is our portion. The lines of the Spirit have fallen upon us to stand in the gap. Lord, we get into our place and position ourselves on the wall. Lord, we curse the spirits of Sanballat, of Tobiah and Jeshem. We say we will not come down off the wall as it was with Nehemiah. And Lord, we, will, we are going to do and finish the work of the Lord. Lord, show us any people, places or things that have been strategically put into our paths to blind our eyes, close our ears, Lord, and shut our mouth in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ where it is needed and those that have been around us. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over our eyes, our ears and our mouth that they will be used by God in this hour. Lord, we renounce outright any subliminal idolatry that might be affecting us. We also come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, that we learn not to lean on our own understanding. Lord, our spiritual life will be prosperous and no good thing will be held from us in the name of Jesus. We cast the spirit that comes against our prayer life out of our house. All heaviness and depression go from us and from our family in the name of Jesus. Lord, we put on the full armor of God and every fiery dart of the enemy is broken off our mind and cast out of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Our loins are girded about with truth and every lie against our intercession or relationship with God is defeated. Lord, our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We carry the anointing of intercession in our bellies, Lord. Lord, and on one hand, we have the sword of the Spirit, and in the other hand, we have the shield of faith. The Word of God is nigh us, and Lord, we decree and declare the oracles of God before man and behind closed doors. The Word of God will go from the Logos to the Rhema as we speak it forth in prayer. Lord, we pray the real things, the things that we speak in prayer will take feet and do what the Lord has commanded them to do. For your word says your word does not go forth and come back to you void. Lord, we thank you for helping us to pray prayers that bring results and avail much. All of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. And we will not keep creation on hold. But Lord, we pray today that what was created to have a personal relationship with God, it shall not have any hindrances in the name of Jesus. We stand in the gap to be on the wall and make up the hedge. And Lord, we thank you that we realize that our prayers can change our family, our city and our nation. And we realize that souls may be lost if we are not obedient to our prayers. So Lord, today we take this very seriously in prayer right now. The spiritual discipline of the Lord is our portion. The lines of the Spirit have fallen upon us to stand in the gap to get into our place of positioning and we stand and take that position today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Heavenly Father today in the name of Jesus Lord I pray everything shall be shaken and Lord I thank you even as I encourage the saints now according to the book of Daniel chapter 10 we see that Daniel was praying for
for three weeks, but there was a hindering force that was coming against him through through the prince of Persia. But then after a period of time, after he had been praying and toying, toiling in prayer and tarrying in prayer, all of a sudden the angel of the Lord came and appeared to him and said and said to Daniel that God had heard his prayer from the very first day. And so it is with us. When we keep praying and we keep on being persistent, God hears our prayers. God will deliver us. God will shake off the enemy's attempt to stop us from praying and getting that breakthrough. And that spirit of slumber will never come back to us as we continue to fast and subject it under fasting, as we subject it through different means. So, Lord, I pray today, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you would have your way with each and every person that is hearing this prayer. Let them be blessed today. And, Lord, I pray that you would anoint them more with your Holy Spirit to touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord, that you will bring freedom to their spirit, man, that they may worship you in the beauty of holiness, in the beauty of holiness today. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all what you're doing. And Job 32, 8 says, but it is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives them understanding. Lord, we thank you that our spirit, man, will come to the full knowledge and understanding of you through your breath. Lord, in Ecclesiastes 12, 7, you said, and the dust returns to the ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. God, you gave us this spirit. You gave us this spirit that we may commune with you. We may worship you in spirit and in truth. So have your way today as we commit this prayer and we commit all things that we may be effective in prayer. We may be effective in hearing the word of God to achieve all the things in the devil's plan against our success in our studies, in our marriages, in our workplace, in our family life, in all areas of ministry ministry will not come to pass in Jesus name but we shall be effective and we shall hit the mark as it is Lord with a target and we shall hit that target all the time in Jesus mighty name so Lord I just thank you and I give you all the praise in Jesus mighty name this is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrowpath Ministries in Perth Australia be blessed today as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ